was completed. We wanted to simplify the bylaws wherever possible. We found out that was going to be harder than we thought, so a lot of the changes that we maybe wanted to make at the very beginning, we weren't able to because they didn't fit with, with the laws and the Constitution. So we were very careful about looking into that. Um, one of our goals was to avoid disenfranchisement of any Republican voter in LD20. And many, many precincts in LD20 are not represented by a Republican precinct committeeman, um, more than half, which is a shame and hard to believe and still really true. Um, so we wanted to be inclusive of all LD20 PCs uh, to be able to vote and that kind of thing. All right, moving on. So um, we deleted appendices in the outline. In the original outline that was sent, the appendices at the very back were already covered in the body of the bylaws. So we didn't want the redundancy. So that's the very first thing that we did. Um, the special committee agreed to change the article header in article number two from object to objective. We wanted this to be actionable kind of activity. We were very interested in making sure that we were talking about present tense, what we're going to do. We wanted an objective, not just object. Does anyone disagree with that? Changing the header? All right, next. Um, one of our biggest concerns in Article 3, Section 1, we wanted to make sure that every PC could, uh, could actually vote and, and had voting rights, not just elected PCs. Because there is an Arizona Revised Statute 16-821, Section B, which I, oh my gosh, I'm not a lawyer. I have read more <coughs> statutes this year than I've ever read in my entire life. And I can't help thinking about Mark Twain, who said, <laughs> You don't want to know how sausage is made, and you don't want to know how laws are made. <laughs> oh my goodness. But what ended up happening is we can't actually, it looks like we can't make the change to have appointed PCs also voting yet. We'll have to write a statute for that. But I did want to let you know that that was one of our biggest missions. We wanted to have a voice for anyone who's like brand new Who's, who's a constitutionalist, who really cares about how this country was made, who cares about family values, specifically our Hispanic population, to be able to come in and vote. Um, so anyway, if anyone wants to help write a statute with me, please do. If you're a lawyer, more, more the better. So I included the ARS 16821 here, why we can't change it yet. Any questions? All right, and then again, in, in Article 3, Section 2, um, we wanted to inform, and we added the word motivate for the same reason that we wanted to make an object objective. We want to make sure that we're motivating our PCs to do this work. All right, Article 3, Section 4. Um, section 4A. We actually wanted to eliminate language that said failure to maintain registration as a Republican to changing party preference. We wanted it to have a more positive focus rather than a negative focus. But um, again, uh, the, the executive committee unanimously agreed to this. So does anyone have a question about that? That slide's missing from this. Yeah. Oh, it may be. Okay. I, I didn't Sorry. have that one. That's all right. <laughs> We're going to the next one anyway. Okay. On page 7 of 18. Oh, see, the, I, see, I added things like page 7 of 18. I must not have put it on there. Okay, if you're <laughs> holding the bylaws, page 7 of 18, which is a... Article 5A and J, 4 and 5. We were going to change the third and fourth vice chair position duties um, to different offices, but what we decided to do is input 
that duties will be assigned by the chairperson for the third and fourth vice chair whenever these positions are vacant for whatever reason. We have a small LV20 PC group. We're small. To have a third and a fourth vice chair, we have more people you know, sitting at the front than we need. So the recommendation will be that the duties will be assigned by chair when these offices are vacant and that if the duties are required for more than three months, that we will hold a special election to elect a third and a fourth vice chair. Does anybody have a problem with that? Okay, we're in the discussion. <laughs> <laughs> and we also put a little asterisk beside every two thirds votes throughout the bylaws document. And here's the deal. In the standing rules under head, heading C, it says if previous notice has been given, only a majority vote is needed. So we wanted to make sure that if we do send out a notice in a proper amount of time, like we sent out a copy of these bylaws 10 days before this meeting and said there will be a vote, we don't have a quorum today and we haven't passed these bylaws and we can't vote on these today. So this won't stand today. But if we all agree on this, if previous notice has been given, all we will need to pass or, or to vote on anything is a majority of presence in this room at, at our general meeting. Is it, does anyone have a problem with that? All right. And then highlighted for your review. Okay, and I have, it's just saying it again, retention. Okay, now we're on. That retention of election ballots and standing rules. So we've moved all the way through the document. And literally, we went through this with a fine tooth comb. I am not going through this with a fine tooth comb with you guys. It would be so boring. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and then you would want to read every statute and everything. And that's really boring too. Um, I'm not a lawyer. You know I'm not a lawyer, right? <laughs> all right. So. Um, this is related to how long we hold election data for our for our LV20 and it currently says 14 days and we this is one of those things where we actually wanted to add in work add work to it and it's actually to the secretary position so it's to me but we wanted to change it from 14 days to six months that we would hold on to election data and primarily, I think it's because of the sensitivity that we have around feeling like our elections anywhere just seem to be, you know, not what they should be. And, and so, and I appreciate all the work that Catherine has done to help, you know, with election integrity and some other things that this group has done to really help with that. Does anyone have a problem with increasing the length of time that we need to hold on to our ballots in this room from 14 days to six months? Okay, that's it. That's really pretty much it. <laughs> Great job, Shelly. Thank you very much. We can't vote today because we do not have a quorum today. We have 13 people from LD20. We needed 15 to make a vote today. So next month we'll go ahead and hold this for a vote. Yes. You know what? I know I have a couple of friends that don't check their email all the time because it gets so. Since I've been a PC, I get so many emails. I. Yeah. If I missed to me, it's because I forgot about it because I didn't see the email because I got hundreds of email. So is it possible, if, and I'll do it if you want, I can call people to remind them? Absolutely, yeah. And, and I've also, when I had a note, please text me instead of email me, or text me and tell me you emailed me, I sent texts as well. Because I had so, a friend that said, I don't, I don't, I get too many emails. I don't know when the. Meeting I understand. Is. I really do. And I, I put, uh, I put some kind of voting notice or something as the header on this email. You know, LD twenty vote. Uh -huh. So I try to make it be really out there, like really. So if you want to give me, if, if you want, sure, I'm, I'm willing to Thank do you. it. Thank you. Give me some phone numbers Thanks, and I'll baby. call. I appreciate. And gently that. prod. I appreciate that a lot. <laughs> All right. Any questions or concerns or thank you very, very much. And special thanks to Chris Ackerley for bringing the projector. <laughs> I could not have done this without you. It's those other you for doing that horrible job. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs>
I mean, you didn't do okay. a terrible job, but it was a horrible project. Yeah. It was a very, I'm sure you guys wouldn't even really appreciate how many hours went into this, but there was a lot of hours that went into this and the materials that helped. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being patient listening to it, too, because uh, it was boring. It wasn't, it wasn't but she did it as nice I saw it. I did. So, you know, it was just bullet points. Compact. And I like keeping things simple. <laughs> <laughs>